We're good. All right. Well, good evening. Uh, my name is uh, Victor Shim. Um, I'm actually president and chairman of the board of the Asian Business League. Uh, we partner with ALA and also now uh, SF here for our Gateway series. Um, as you can see up here, um, I'm, I'm also a senior adjunct professor at Golden Gate University. I've been teaching and instructing there since uh, 2013. I mainly primarily focus on uh, management and leadership, and those are my core classes uh, that I do instruct. Now, my full-time job, I am a, a director with Bank of the West in the Bill Rent Banking Division, and I've been doing that for the past five years, and I'm banking close to 27 years. Um, tonight's topic, uh, we, we actually, through collaboration and just some thoughts and some areas that I've actually spoken about, and I, in fact, did something during the pandemic for Bank of the West was a topic on finding your purpose. And in fact, we did a brown bag luncheon at that time uh, for the company. So I, I did six different sessions over six weeks for bank employees uh, to talk about purpose and passion and various other subjects. And I thought it'd be really uh, fun uh, to go over this topic just because of the new year and plus going into 2023, right? A lot of changes were emerging from the pandemic. And uh, I know there's a lot of people out there just trying to find their bearings and uh, pivoting into this new environment. So I, I do welcome all of you. Uh, I, I do have a hard stop at 6.30, 6.35. I, I do have a class to teach up afterwards. <laughs> so um, I, I, my, my scheduling today was not the best, but it, nonetheless, I, I'm, I'm very uh, happy to be here. So a couple things, all right? What is purpose? How do you find your purpose? And really, what is your purpose, all right? Uh, we're, we're gonna go over these topics and it's not a simple answer, but the answer may be in front of you. A lot of people do not know that their purpose is something that they've been acting on or behaving or doing for all these years. And you just need someone to say, hey, you know what? I think this is what you are meant to do, all right? Or maybe through self-discovery, all right? So first things first. We use the word purpose quite a bit, right? And a lot of times uh, we use it in the business sense. A lot of times we use it professionally. A lot of times we use it just to maybe um, find a uh, means of uh, creating a discussion. But here, this is strictly from the Webster Dictionary, all right? What is the meaning of purpose? And I, I accepted the words that were appropriate for it. Uh, yes, there is a noun, there is a verb to it, but we're going to take the noun first. The reason for doing something or the reason that something exists, right? The purpose, right? Well, it's a flower here for a mountain, the stream, right? But really, we're looking at ourselves to see what our purpose is. It's determination or a feeling of having a reason for what you do, all right? The second part we're gonna go over, and I'm not gonna talk too much about it because I think it is a separate topic that you can discuss, but it does go hand in hand with purpose, right? Because people are gonna start talking about that. Right. Passion. It's emotions as distinguished from reason. It's intense, driving or overmastering feeling or conviction. A strong liking or desire for or devotion to some activity, object, or concept. An object of desire or deep interest. Right. So clearly two separate definitions we have there. But like I said, they do go hand in hand, and we're going to explain why. All right. So really, what is your purpose? All right. So I want to hear from some of you guys here, and I know a lot of you have distinguished careers, right, and lives. Do you know what your purpose is or what your purpose has been? Tell me. <laughs> well, my purpose was basically to have a passionate life and uh, meaningful work when I was uh, pursuing my career. And, uh, I uh, felt that the main uh, vision has been trying to get a balance between the two. And you know, and happiness and uh, a drive to succeed at work and make accomplishments is very key, right? That's a key factor of what gets us going. But I'm going to ask you this what were the main motivation and drivers for you? Uh, Why did you do what you did? A lot of what I did, what I did, can be answered by understanding that I was raised in a state of effect. And 
Uh, in those days, there were very few Asian Americans living in Houston, Texas. And as a result of that, I felt uh, that I was marginalized as a minority, never quite fit in. Uh, all of the uh, media and the, and the people I was interviewed were all uh, very white, uh, you know, uh, white Americans. And uh, I, I went through a good part of my life trying to fit in and never really felt comfortable. With it. So what motivated me was to, to, to do as well as I could at school because uh, my parents called me at a school to teach and, and to that way out of this situation to achieve uh, success in your school because that leads to better jobs and that leads to uh, greater success in the world over in your future. So I did, in a sense, blindly because I didn't really know about it true. Um, but I did that, and uh, after many years of uh, uh, slogging through my academic studies and hopefully getting a job, I, I didn't realize that uh, what they said was true, so I didn't waste all my time doing what they told me to do. I lost my time. No, that, 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 in fact, that is probably a, um, a a purpose or a drive that resonates with a lot of first generation Asian, Asian Americans here in the United States, right? So same story, same pathway, maybe a little pivot here or there. Now, since I know you, I'm going to talk about fashion, all right? I know you had a couple of them. What are they? <laughs> well, I, I, the, probably the first passion, and it's probably my, my most overriding passion even to this day, is, is uh, a great uh, fascination and interest in music. I enjoy the rest of the old, uh, old East, uh, 1950s and 1960s uh, music. Um, I continue to uh, try to keep current until I stop my 10 years of work. Uh, the other passion that a lot of people know that I have is I collect old equipment. Uh, I had a train set when I was in Years, they all got destroyed. So when I and I couldn't afford the more expensive trains, of course, because we were fairly impoverished family. So when I got older, you know, older and they had more discretionary income, I uh, renewed my interest in, uh, in in that particular uh, object and perspective and continued some passion. And of course, uh, I share one particular action that you you have as well as that. I, I love good food, so yes. I always go to restaurants and uh, you know, always look for the next good discovery. So. No, and passion is very strong, right? It's, it's something that we, some people do obsess about. Some people want to be experts at, right? And they want to learn as much information about it, right? So it fits the definition, right? It's a devotion to some activity, object, object or concept, right? That's what we do. All right, well, one more good example, just because I'm trying to build a good scenario when we talk about purpose and passion, right? And there's a way to differentiate it. And like I said, we're gonna come back and tie it. Maggie, what do you think your purpose is? Okay, so I have to be really my purpose is just to make a living. Okay, I don't have much, I don't have much thought. I just when I got here at the international student, I just thought. Okay, I got to finish my school, and after that, I got to find a job, and after that, I got wait a minute, everybody has a husband, you know, and I'm like, I want a life like that, so how do I achieve that life? So I decided to start a mess, and you know, from small, and then all the way to now. So just make a living is my purpose. That's the purpose. I guess. <laughs> and then what, do you have any passions, or is there something that you strongly have a conviction, devotion to cooking, dancing? Um, well, to be honest, I have a lot of things that, like dancing. And I can't say it's passion, but I like, okay. I like it, I enjoy doing it. But after, um, in, uh, in that situation for the last 20 years, I, I become really passionate about that. I, if I have a chance, I always tell my friend, hey, this is the chance to make a good thing. I mean, this is my success story. Maybe it can be your success story. So, become my passion to tell people my little bit of the piece. Okay. And so, you might be the scenario where passion and purpose combines together. Right? A lot of times it does not happen. 
right? Because when you start looking for purpose, you may initially start with passion. You might say, hey, I love working with children, right? Well, then what can we do? Well, then my purpose is to teach them, right? I could be a teacher, right? And then looking back, actually everybody here, and especially the board members, right? I think I, I joined Asian Business League initially um, just uh, coming to the city, uh, building my business, being a banker, being a manager. I knew I needed to stay connected. I needed to build relationships. But then after realizing what impacts nonprofits do, it became a passion. All right, a passion where I joined multiple boards. Uh, those who know me know that I've sat on multiple boards in the city, from a dance academy to a children's education, a music museum, and of course, the Asian Business League of San Francisco. But eventually, what starts happening is through the experience and with networking and building relationships and meeting all of you and um, just understanding where I need to navigate in this field. And, and, and the passion for nonprofit work was I, I, I was a true believer in civic duty. I was a true believer in giving back to the community. Um, I, I believed in really interacting with others and being a resource and finding resources, all right? But that was just a passion at that point. And I didn't understand that there was ultimately a purpose, right? Now I found out after uh, I've been on the board for 21 years and a nonprofit world for 21 years, that really my purpose is really to share my knowledge to make an impact to the community by giving back, right? We're here to share knowledge, we're here to share time, we're here to share resources, now, even people, right? Because it's about connections, right? So eventually the nonprofit world became a purpose to me and I understand what, where my purpose is. Even though I've been trying to leave the board for the past 20 years, I can't. <laughs> but um, I, I say that jokingly, but, uh, but eventually the passion became my purpose because I, I knew what my ultimate end goal should be, right? Um, same thing with teaching. How did I end up? Uh, becoming a teacher. Well, being a manager, a leader, um, you know, I've managed teams up to 100. I've been a national sales manager where I overlooked 1,500 offices for the United States. Um, uh, throughout the common bond throughout my career was I, people always called on me to train people. People always called on me to take on new hires. Um, uh, in, in, in fact, um, you know, even being in the nonprofit world, I've been, you know, asked to speak or how to uh, teach others how to fundraise or how to speak to people, whatever the uh, background might be. But there was a core area where people were recognizing, hey, Victor, you're a great trainer. Well, after I got my executive MBA, I um, consulted with Golden Gate University for about seven to eight years, uh, where I advised graduating students from um, the master's class in finance, basically uh, career guidance. Um, and then my uh, professor, who uh, I worked under uh, one year, said, uh, well, in 2013, said, hey, I have a management class. Would you like to teach the class? Uh, but before teaching it, he asked me, why do you want to teach? And that was a very good question. And I, I told him some of my background about training. I love to train people. But then around 2013, and maybe a couple of years before that, I, I realized there was a shift in the demographics, right? We're, we're going more into the millennial generation. Uh, um, and uh, this, and I, I realized that the workforce was changing. The people I was interviewing, the younger people I was working with were not like me anymore. They thought differently, they acted differently, they talked differently, they had different attitudes, they had different habits, and I was frustrated, right? And I said, the reason why I want to teach is because I want to take the next generation of workers to expose them to what real life, real work life may be in the future, right? Because they don't teach that at all, right? Unless you're working. But for the most case, you're going to school, you're not privy to experience, you don't have any learnings yet, right? Uh, there are certain expectations, and when you hit the reality of things, things are a little bit different, or maybe to some, a lot different. And so, I taught initially uh, due to frustration because I noticed the workforce really was different. They weren't, they weren't in jive with me, right? We're on two different pages. Um, and I also realized this in the nonprofit world when we were recruiting board members. The dedication, the time, 
the spirit, it, it, it changed drastically. I, I remember joining ABL early on. We could, we could recruit like five, six, seven people easily in a year, right? Because of the passion, maybe the purpose, maybe the background, what they want to do and how they want to give back was in line with us. But that's changed in the past decade. And it, I didn't say it took us a while uh, because the board was, was changing during that time, but at the same time, we realized what we needed to do. Uh, but that's how I ended up teaching. And I realized that my passion for teaching ended up being a purpose at the university. And my purpose was to take down, uh, especially uh, business students who wanted to major in management and really develop them to the next best leader or best manager or best boss or whatever title that they want, really to get them to that next stage. And um, that, that became a, a passion and purpose for me. And so going back and listening to everybody, right? Purpose is fluid, it's not singular, right? You're not gonna say, hey, I have a purpose and this is it for the rest of my life. In fact, purpose changes all the time, especially if you have, and, and imagine you're, you're not incorrect and say, hey, my purpose is to build my business, right? Is to make money. Nothing is wrong with that, right? But it's how you do it and what you do to impact others around you. A clear distinction between passion and purpose though, right? Passion is really a selfish act, if you think about it. I have passion for cooking, I have passion for eating, right? It's really you, right? I collect trains, I collect comic books. I like watching movies, right? Now to switch it into a purpose, right? It's what you do for others, right? So for example, if you love, let's say, collecting comic books, right? And you wanna share that knowledge, well, maybe, just maybe you might want to be a comic book uh, designer or artist, right? Or a writer, or maybe you'll open up a comic book store. What you're doing is you're sharing with others. So the main intention of purpose is what can you do for others, okay? All right, I'm, I'm gonna go through the cautionary tale of uh, Tony Shea. You guys know who Tony Shea is, right? And unfortunately, during the pandemic, 2020, um, he passed away. So he was the CEO of Zappos from 1999 to 2020, uh, passed away November 27, 2020, all right? Now, there is, from him retiring and, and passing away was a very short span. But as you know, Tony was the CEO of Zappos, right? Zappos was located in Las Vegas. In fact, the area where he moved Zappos to for the headquarters it was a disenfranchised area. He bought the real estate, turned around the business there, right? And he had thousands of employees. And the one thing he focused on, if you study or have read about him, and then uh, fortunately, I have a best friend who used to work for me. Um, and that was the title of his book too, was Delivering Happiness. He focused on happiness. How do I make my customers happy? How do I make my suppliers? How do I make my employees happy and how do I make myself happy? And the irony is the title is A Path to Profit, Passion, and Purpose. All right. So, you know, he was very successful. I know he was at, I think, a VC firm or hit out of his own startup before he took over uh, Zappos. Uh, you know, eventually it was sold to Amazon. Um, but in 2020, he decided to step down as CEO. He wanted to go do something else. All right. But then months later, we hear he passed away. He passed away in a fire. He was, uh, he, uh, what was it? Um, he had mental illness and he had a strong obsession about lighting things on fire. And eventually, just, I, I think it got out of control. It got trapped in his apartment room, condo that he is in, and uh, died of smoke and elevation. Okay. Now, here's the tragic, tragic part about it. And when you start piecing the stories about what Tony had purpose at Zappos, right? He was leading a team of people. He was building a business, right? He was being an entrepreneur. He was focused on happiness. In fact, he is one of the first um, CEOs and com companies that um, adopted a new leadership style called Holocaust. Now, I'm not sure if you've heard of Holocaust before, but it's about self-management. So when he took that on, and he's, uh, I don't want to say he's one of the first few, but I want to say he's one of the first major, uh, I want to say at that time, Fortune 500 company to take on this. 
everybody was stripped of titles. There was no management title. There was no team lead. Just because he believed that people were self-motivating and they knew what their jobs were. So he's one of the first to do that. And that was a way for him to empower his staff and also himself. But the, the, the sad part is when you start analyzing what he did after he retired, he could tell he lost his purpose. He didn't have a team to make happy. He didn't surround himself with the right people. He was taking drugs, all right? He had mental illness. Uh, in fact, there have been uh, numerous documented uh, conversations either via email or text or uh, even interviews about him trying so hard to fit in with the new crowd of people that he was buying people things that they didn't need. He was paying for their food, he was paying for their lodging. Now he is buying happiness, right? He left a great institution that he built, right? Not only for himself, but for his employees and shareholders of work. But he was lost. There was no guidance. He didn't have anybody to speak to. And you could tell he lost his purpose because he lost his passion. He was he didn't know what to do anymore, right? So Tony, I bring up just because I bring up his leadership uh, my leadership class about holocausty and the pros and cons about it. And that's for another discussion. But a new book came out about him. It's happy at any cost. This just came out recently on Amazon. And it's two ladies that went through every single manuscript about Tony Shea, about his life, about his business and how he grew up, but then eventually they analyzed the months. I, I think he was only retired five months, right? And listen, he, he sold his company to Amazon for billions. He had hundreds of million dollars in his bank account. He just wasn't happy, right? So there's a cautionary tale, but the big thing here, like you could tie, is he lost his purpose, right? And a lot of times, when you do lose purpose, right, you start losing energy, right? It starts affecting you physically and mentally. There's going to be a lot of self-doubt, right? There's going to be maybe depression. Um, maybe if you are working or you're engaged in some other activity that you're typically putting your energy into, it's, that starts to diminish, right? How many times have you guys maybe lost your purpose throughout your career? Or you said, maybe this isn't what I should be doing. I'm not too happy. I'm in a bad situation, right? All right. <laughs> Here's another question to ask you. How many of you are passionate about their current careers? All right. Now, with that career and what you do now, does that translate into purpose? Is there a purpose coming from that? And in most cases, some people will say no, right? Because a lot of times you won't find your purpose at the workplace, right? But that's another discussion because now in today's world, right? Especially in the ESG world and corporate responsibility, right? And, and employee life balance, organizations are trying to provide the purpose to their employees so that they can stay. And then employees are trying to find organizations where their values lines up with their with your company's values so you can align the purpose, right? And nothing's wrong with that. But that's that's the new uh, development in today's workplace. And like I said, that's another subject that, that we can talk about. All right, so steps to finding your purpose. Like I said, it can be in front of you. You just need to harness it, all right? Or maybe you just need to recognize it. First things first. I'm gonna ask yourself a few questions. Who are you? Right? And obviously you guys know who you are, right? <laughs> what you do, what who you do it for, all right? Why you do it, what impact are you making? Right? Just ask yourself this question, right? Now, obviously, I, I'm gonna still be all know who you are, right? <laughs> Unless you're still on a life journey and trying to find yourself, which is okay, right? And that might be part of finding your purpose, all right? And what do you do? Now, currently, like I asked, like who's passionate about their jobs or, uh, or do you have purpose uh, at what you do right now? And the answer might be a little bit boring, but that's okay. But just bring it up. What do you do? Who do you figure out what functions do you have? Who do you affect? If you manage people, if you lead people, 
think about what impacts you may be leading to them or where you want to take them to the next level. Why do you do it? Right now, the why depends on where you are in your life, right? If you're just starting out, you need a job, you need to get put on the door, of course, right? I mean, a lot of people say, hey, I'm just doing it because I need to get a paycheck, right? That's okay, right? That, that happens. We, we all go through, go through that, right? But really, the important thing is question is what impact are you making? So if you feel that you have a purpose, right? And if it's tied with passion in some cases, find out who you are impacting and what demographic or community that you're helping out. Right. Uh, going back to the example for myself, right, uh, in the nonprofit world, the community, of course, is the AAPI community, but also it's also the San Francisco Bay Area, because I, I see that what we do is also comparable to others, right? That's the impact. Same thing with teaching and instructing. What, what I do as a professor, I'm hoping to impact the, you know, up-and-coming graduates so that I better prepare them for their next job, their next promotion, their ma next manager uh, opportunity, their next leadership opportunity. And if I know that I'm making an impact, that satisfies my passion and purpose. Now, there are some areas that you do need to satisfy to understand if you have purpose or not, all right? First, you're going to have to love it. But I do say that with a caveat, right? Because you may have purpose and you know it may be necessary to make change in the world, okay? Uh, but you don't need to necessarily love it, right? Because it's a very tricky, it's a very tricky word to play upon. But in the gist and the spirit of this, loving it means that you have trust for it and that you understand the mission for it. You are great at it, right? Typically, if you have purpose or passion, and of course, we're concentrating on purpose, you're pretty good at it, right? You're a pretty good CPA, you're a pretty good lawyer, you're a pretty good manager, you're a pretty good leader, all right? You're a pretty good organizer, whatever it may be, okay? You pay for it, meaning that you invested time and money into it, right? It's, some, it's a skill, it's a trade, it's something that you feel value in, that you don't mind spending a dollar or two or more on that, all right? And then the world needs it. Now, this is a very global term, okay? Because what I do, maybe the world doesn't need it, but I know my community does, all right? So if you want to hold it down, that's fine. But we're, we're thinking of the big broad picture here, and the world needs it, right? And that means, are you making impact to others around you? All right. And these are just some of the areas that you need to support your purpose. You need passion, you need mission, you need vocation, you need a profession, right? Some of the cooks in the world are very passionate, right? And the great cooks in the world who are passionate typically opens up a restaurant or maybe have a cooking show or write a cookbook, right? Or maybe they just go out and end up being a food blogger or whatever it may be, right? But typically, if you have that strong of a passion and you could translate it into a profession, right? Then you'll find your purpose there. All right, some simple guidelines to follow. Uh, just, uh, I was telling one last night, we were at another event down in Lopitas. I said, hey, I gotta leave the event because I haven't started my presentation for tonight. <laughs> So I did this at my think tank at night last night. But I was thinking about um, my journey and how I came to my purpose. And you know, and what I do obviously will not be your path. You have to choose your own path. How you get there is up to you. But at the same time, I think there are guidelines just because there's so much information out there and there's so many things to do. And, and there's so many, uh, I want to say, voices in your head, right? People telling you what to do or what you need to do. Um, you know, first, just don't stress over it, right? Because purpose, like I said, it's, 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 not, it's not definite. It's something that you search and you go along the way. I mean, I think we all have multiple purposes, right? If you end up being married and you have a kid or two kids or three kids, your, your purpose in many ways is to be the best father possible, right? 
to raise their children to make sure that they're safe, right? Um, if you bought a house, right, and you know that you have to pay the bills, there are other purposes to work hard so you can make enough money to pay for those bills, right? So there's multiple ways to that, and it's okay, right? And purpose will evolve during time. There might be a purpose when you're a kid and a teenager, right? I want to be the best soccer player or I want to concentrate on going to college. And then once you get to college, you're going to say, hey, you know what? Uh, you know, I want to major in XYZ or I want to get a job here or there, right? Then you say, hey, I want to get a job. I want to get the best job. I want to get the best paying job, right? Then you meet someone, you get married, you have kids, you buy a car, you go on vacation, right? There's, there's a lot of intentional purposes that you do. And it's okay to set, per, I, I want to say, the tangible goals along the way, right? Because a purpose is you need a direction, you need an idea, you need a mission, right? Now, to obviously set a purpose, right? Now, there are lots of people out there who, you know, go out and they try to find themselves, right? Which is fine, right? They go on trips, they go on sabbaticals, they go on retreats, they go to camping, they talk to people, they go to school, whatever it may be. But you can't set your purpose. Right? But eventually, you have to dig down deep inside and really identify what it is that you really want to do. Sometimes we'll stumble across purpose, right? Purpose can find you. Right? A lot of times, it's just identifying what's in front of you. Or maybe it's something you've done before and you're not realizing, hey, you know what? This is what I intend to be doing or should be doing. Um, purpose can change constantly, right? It, it changes all the time, like I said, and that's okay, right? It could be short, it could be uh, immediate, uh, but at the end of the day, though, nothing's wrong with that, right? You want to be intentional, okay? Right? Now, here's the thing. I know you can say, hey, I'm going to go find my purpose, and you could be scattered and all around, go all around the place, seeking after it, right? And that may work for some, but it's not ideal because now you're just wasting time. But be intentional. Like I said, think about what you've done, who you do it for, why you do it, right? If it's an area that you like and you enjoy, and maybe you can make a career out of it or you can share it, right? Focus on that. And that's where be focused comes in, right? Be focused about it, especially if you think about it. But I always, number one, don't stress over it, right? So if you're still trying to find out what your passion or purpose is, and you walk out this door, don't beat yourself up over it, right? It, it takes time, all right? A lot of times, pause and evaluate. Maybe you're out there, you're doing something, you're networking, you're talking to people, you maybe you've built a wonderful product, or you, you've just achieved success on something. Take a step back and evaluate how you got there and why, right? Who contributed, uh, who you affected, who you impacted, right? And that you may find that purpose through that way. And also talk about it with others. Sit down with your friends. Ask them, what was your journey? Right? How can we relate? What can we share? What can we do? I think talking is very important about it just because many people will have, of course, their own story on their passion and purpose. They're going to have their own story, how they got there. A lot of it may resonate with you, a lot of it may not, but at the end of maybe the conversation, hopefully you will have some great, strong takeaways where you say, okay, I know what I need to focus on. Right? I know what to do. Also, I know what not to do right? or what to avoid. Uh, and that's why we want to build relationships. And that's why we want to talk about it with others. And I know, um, uh, jokingly, a lot of times people say, hey, what's the meaning of life? And what's the difference between that and purpose, right? Now, if you uh, watch the Hitchcock's Guide to the Galaxy, you know, life is like 42. <laughs> you guys know it. Or read the book. But you know what? But finding purpose really is a lifelong journey. Yeah. There's not one answer. Yes, there are things that are expected of us, especially when I'm growing up, we have family, your parents may want you to be X, Y, and Z. But really, it's your journey. It's your, it's your story to write. Uh, quote by Marla Gibbs, an actress and comedian. Um, I truly believe that everything that we do and everyone that we meet is put in our path for a purpose. There are no accidents, we're all teachers. If we're willing to pay attention to the lessons we learn, 
trust our positive instincts and not be afraid to take risks or wait for some miracle to come knocking at our door. So this is by Marla Gibbs. And so that concludes my uh, brief uh, talk about finding purpose. But I, I, I have time right now. Uh, we could take questions or we could discuss it a little bit more. If someone wants to kind of share their journey about their um, their mission and purpose, you know, feel free. Uh, I, I know I could pick on a couple more people here. So you guys got to volunteer first before I start calling names like Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Management and leadership uh, 
class, um, there is a, uh, we talk about motivation and we rank 15 different items on motivation. And of course, it's like money or I want to work a good job or I want a good boss, I want stability, whatever it may be. And uh, of course, everybody ranks their top motivators different, right? Uh, some will push money number one, or some people might look at put it last. But that all depends on where you are in your career, right? If you're close to retirement, money may not be important. Of course, retirement or stability or being healthy, right? Or if you're just starting off in the workplace, money can be right the main motivator. I'm, I'm here because I want to make money. Nothing is wrong with it, right? There, so the, what I'm trying to say is there's really no wrong answer. It's just you have to be able to step back, evaluate why you prioritize certain things, right? And then once you have an understanding of why you do things and what the reasons are, that'll help, of course, navigate your career and what your purpose is and hopefully maybe passion, right? And, you know, and pa passion, you do need strong passion for many instances, right? And if you're able to tie that with your purpose, then it's a win-win situation. But you've heard, I, I hear this many times where someone's very good at something and you say, hey, you should monetize that. They say, no, 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 if I monetize my passion, I'm gonna end up hating it, right? Because now it ends up being like a job, it ends up being work, which is completely valid, right? Because there's other things that's involved with that, <laughs> right? <laughs> because yes, you are, once you make it a purpose, you're serving others, but you may not want the others to give you feedback or input on what you're doing, right? So that may ruin your passion. <laughs> so there's, you have to navigate carefully and really truly understand what you really want.